Hello, darlings. Today we've got, after a long wait, another Star Clinic Q&A. Um, and I'm here to give you advice on everything to do with clothing and makeup combinations and um, what colors go with what colors. <gasps> Closet Confessions this weekend is fantastic. It's all about, it's all about clash colors. Clash colors, is that the right word I used? I think it is. Um, so I'm waiting and ready for you. I'm just getting myself prepped whilst we just build. And then um, if you have something in your wardrobe you want to show me and think, should you keep it? Um, if you want to just ask me, can I wear these two things together? I'm gonna to call you in and we're gonna go through. If you sort of feel frustrated by your body and you don't have the confidence to think what you can wear, Let's talk about it to give you that confidence to be more adventurous. I think with staying at home, it has given us an opportunity to look at what's inside our cupboard. It's also, you know, for some people meant that their body shape has changed somewhat. You know, some people might have started their menopause on lockdown. Some people might have put on weight during lockdown. Some people might have lost weight during lockdown. But whatever it is, how can we make you feel fantastic for the body you have today and how to dress it? Understanding what your body is. I talk a lot about body shape. So what does it mean to have short legs and a long body? All those questions you can ask me now. I'm just going to put on my glasses and let me say hello to some people. Good morning. And I'm going to pin. We are doing a style clinic. Hang on. Let me just um, pin. I've forgotten how to bloody pin. Comment. Style clinic. Style clinic. That's what we're doing today. Um, and I'm going to post that and then I'm going to pin it because I'm trying to be organized here. Pin comment. Perfect. Excellent. Um, Summer looks at hide the legs. I so identify with that. I mean, a lot of you know that I, you know, I've got my legs are fine. All right. But I've never felt my legs are the thing I love. We all have something that we feel is our. Sorry, just put my back here. That we feel is something we feel good about. And if you don't have that, I want you now, for those women watching who think, oh, I hate everything about my body, to um, look at how that statement might insult your self-worth. Because I feel every woman should begin to love a part of her body. Some women love more bits of their body than others, but we're here today to help women to love their bodies as much as possible, and then to be able to find it easier to dress. So the more tools you have in what colors you suit, in what shape your body is, um, and in closet confessions, even though I only use my own body, and my own body is a size 12 top, um, you know, long bodied and shorter legs. So I, I dress, always to make my legs look longer, to give myself more of a waist, to make my shoulders look broader and my waist look, look uh, um, you know, so that I give myself not an hourglass, that'd be a huge exaggeration, but I just give myself a, a, a better form of shape. Um, and I think everyone can do these tips and tricks, whatever their size. So when you might look at a closet confessions on a Saturday, where I take you through different categories of wardrobes from color to um, how to wear clothes, I just, try and uh, talk about all different body shapes and how they could do it too, like shapes of jackets for a um, curvy woman with a bigger boob and a broader shoulder and, um, you know, all those different variations, which I might not have on my body. So do feel that um, as an extension of what today is about, the Star Clinic, you can also look at Closet Confessions. And there's different ways to look at Closet Confessions. You can go onto Instagram and in the top middle bit, I'm just going to say this now because I think lots of people are still finding their way around the um, the uh, IGTV. So whenever I say to you, you can see it on IGTV. Um, for those of you that always think, well, I, wh how do I find that thing that you did? So whenever I do a live afterwards, it's always gonna be on IGTV. And IGTV is this button here, which is, looks like a little television, do you see it? So you can click on that and you'll see all the long films I did by days. So you could probably find things there. There's hundreds on there. But there's also this tiny button so badly displayed called series. So if you click on series, all the all the films I do, I put into categories of series. So you can see there the T-Zone show, Closet Confessions, Friday Twinning with Chloe. So I might just think I want, for this reference, because we're talking about clothing, to look at Closet Confessions. There's 30 Closet Confessions there. So you could just think, oh, I really want to understand how to wear pink 
or I want to understand, you know, color coordinated outfits. So you just go to that, press on that and you can see that film. OK, simple as that. And that will hopefully be helpful for any questions I haven't answered today. All right. That's what I'm talking about. OK, so are we ready? I'm just going to say hello to a few people and then I'm going to call people in. But what I need to ask you to do is if you want to come on in and you want to ask advice on your body shape or on a piece of clothing and you're thinking, how on earth do I wear this? And you want inspiration and some advice on it. I need you to be ready doing certain things. I need you to have your phone on a ledge or just um, not in your hand or looking into a mirror so I can see you. Because I, when people go, can you tell me what this dress is like? And I just see your face and your neck. That's quite tricky for us and the audience to um, help you. So um, that would be important if you've got somebody else in the house who can actually film you even better. But try and have that ready by the time I come to you, okay? Because that will make it far easier for everyone else watching to see you straight away and for me to help you. OK, that's that's kind of those are the main rules about doing style clinics. So um, hello, Peppy, freezing cold Adelaide. Oh, my God. Bulgaria, Rosie. Hello, Jenny. Good morning from New York City. I, sorry, that's Jay Heinrich. Good morning from Good North City. I'm assuming you're called Jenny. Hello, blue eyed birdies. Hope you are well. Dania. Hello. Hello, everybody. Christelle. Hello, my darling. Um, Eva, hello from Melbourne, Australia. Um, Booth Cockapoo, hello, my darling too. Hello, blue-eyed buddy. Yes, Rochelle. Um, Rochelle, I wear very safe colours such as black and beige. I have brown eyes, dark hair and brown skin. What's best would suit me? Now, Rochelle, if you want to come onto the live, then do do a request and I will look at you and tell you. But I would say if you have a brown skin, everyone's skin Brown is a huge category. Are you dark as caramel? Are you a sort of more of a kind of, are you heading towards a mahogany? Are you red undertone? Are you a, a, a cooler undertone? These all count whether you could wear a neon or whether you need to go warmer. So um, I would, it would be very helpful to see you. Can I, I can see a tiny picture of you there, but try and come on the live um, and I'll show you. But if you feel that your dark hair is cool and your brown eyes are cool and not warm, chocolatey well they're chocolatey more than hazily warmy and your brown skin is just neutral you could do this and look amazing i've done so many um women of um you know sort of when they aren't too warm in dark skin tones and they suit these really great colder colors and if you have any warmth anywhere then you want to go towards the warmer palette um but wearing beige is in a way your it's like my for me if you're cool toned wearing beige is like me wearing cream it drains the color out of my face because cream is about four shades lighter than my skin tone and beige is about maybe six or seven shades lighter than your skin tone and i find it draining so um let's have a little look uh, if you can come on in. But that's some general feedback. Be right, birdie. Hello, darling. Hello, uh, Jules Glamart. Lovely. Um, hello, Alicia. Much love to you too, darling. What are my views on Chanel bags? I think that, you know, some women love things because it, you know, by having something that, that is to many people comfortable, like a Chanel handbag, and I, I have three, um, you feel you've arrived somewhere. It's a statement. It's Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City. It's that kind of like fantasticness. But my Chanel bag life has really changed because I, you know, I'm going to show you my Chanel bag life. Actually, I don't have the, I, okay, I will. Actually, I'm going to go and get it. All right, go. let's talk about the importance of having an amazing statement piece in your wardrobe, okay? Um, my thought on this where we're at in this day and age is I would never buy them new again I just wouldn't I think the prohibitive cost of buying these things new is just criminal and I look at these new Birkin bags and I, I just have an association with people where it is that but if you have all the money in the world and you love them I'm not going to judge you for it but I've only ever bought Chanel bags second hand and in the like in 2006 or seven, 2007, I was making a show in America and Susan and I worked really hard 
and I had spent seven weeks filming and I hadn't bought one single thing. I hadn't bought a, a tissue. So I'd saved some money and I went to New York and I was so exhausted and I thought I wanted to treat myself. So I bought this. I bought that Chanel bag. Okay. So that Chanel bag, you know, is like, I mean, what can I say? It's the most ostentatious thing ever. But this Chanel bag for me, before you had wheelie suitcases, I would then, we then filmed another four weeks in America. And every weekend I wanted to go away somewhere. So it became my overnight bag because it's bloody huge. Oh my God, I found another Chanel box in there. Um, it's bloody huge. So it fits, you know, it fits. It was in the summer I was filming and it fits so much. It was so heavy. I was younger then, so it didn't matter. But this was like my... This was like my, my wheelie bag and I loved it. I just, it was fun. And also it cost me, I remember at the time it was a thousand dollars at Reformation in New York or a thousand pounds. I mean, this is like, oh, but that is a collector's piece. I would never wear it right now. I just wouldn't. I just find it too much. You know, it's just, it's too crazy, but it might come out and um, that's that. So that's that one. Then, um, when Lila was born, this is the only bit of Chanel I bought new. I don't know how we turned into this story, but you know, we always, um, you always make me go a certain direction. So Lila was born and I just thought to myself, you know, I have no idea. I was, I was quite flush when Lila was born and uh, in my career I was at a good stage and I was being paid well and I thought, I want to buy Lila a Chanel bag. So when she's 18, I'll give it to her and I'll say I bought this the day you were born. So like 10 days after she was born, I bought this. And it is the first Chanel bag I ever had 30 years ago, which I don't have anymore because I sold when I was raising money, you know, for this business. But this is an unused new Chanel bag. And when Lila is 18, I will give that to her. And I will say, I bought that the week you were born. There, that's why it stays in that other unworn bag. So it has a history. You know, I think the more things have a history in my wardrobe, the more I associate a memory with them, the more I feel the reward I gave myself when I'd worked really hard and I, I said, well, let me buy something. That makes you feel the sustainability of your wardrobe. It makes everything feel precious. And I really want to be at that stage. I know I have a vast amount of clothes, but I've worked in fashion for 35 years. I want everything to have that preciousness in my heart. And if it doesn't, like that Marie Kondo moment, but I think I've had that for many, many years. So that's that moment, okay? That's that moment, I'm gonna put that back up. Okay. All right, then, hold on a second. Ah. Okay, then, 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 I, um, then where are we at? So there's three more here. So then the next Chanel bag I bought, was um, um, I got a credit note because I had been um, given a necklace and it wasn't me and it was a gift from someone. So I went in and I got this instead. And I think why I chose it is I wanted a beautiful little evening bag and it didn't scream Chanel. And I just loved it. It's actually the most impractical bag. It has all these containers, but once I put things in them, the bag doesn't close. <laughs> Um, but I just thought it looked so un -Chanel. I liked it, okay, and, and I wouldn't, would I have bought it if I'd gone and so I don't know, but I wear it, so I've had it for 15, 16 years. Then the next one was, um, and I don't know if I'll ever use this, but a friend of mine was um, needing to sell some of her things because she uh, needed money, and so I thought, let me buy something, so I bought this bag, which is silver, um, from her, um, just to kind of, um, you know, support that and the final one you might all know which is when I was in Australia and this you see this is what happens is that sense so I don't know if I'm going to contradict myself but that sense of don't buy the bag for the sake of a label buy the bag because you absolutely love it you love the shape you love the design you love the color that it brings into your life don't buy it as a way for that company to freely promote on your back their brand that's kind of what I'd say about expensive bags. Um, some of my most favorite bloody bags are, are Zara bags. 
They really are because they just have the color I want for an outfit. They cost me 15 to 30 pounds and they bring my outfits together and I'm so grateful to them. Um, so, you know, 90% of my bags are not expensive. Um, so then the final bag from Chanel is this bag, which I got in Australia. And I was um, passing a vintage shop and I had worked in Australia. We went there for a week and we, I literally got off the plane and started working and we did 16 hour days and Nisha and Dido and Lila and I work like dogs as well as the PR company. And um, on the sort of second to last day, I was going past this shop in Paddington and I saw this bag in a lovely vintage shop there. And I just saw it in the window and I went, oh my God, that's Trini London Yellow. And I went in and I haggled with the lady and she was really tough. And everyone said she's very difficult to haggle with. And in the end, we came to an agreement on price. And so then um, I got it. And it's, it's uh, probably from the 80s or 90s. No, it's probably from early 2000s. Um, and it's, it's fabric, so it easily gets dirty. So I kept putting it in its box. This is the bad thing about putting something in the box. Because then, like three weeks ago... I'm with Lucy and we're doing a closet confessions. If you watch this one, she goes, why did you try the yellow bag with that? And I went, what yellow bag? She went, the Chanel yellow bag. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot I had it. So in fact, because you know, I've rearranged my bags. I don't know if you've seen this. Let me just show you. Um, I re It's turning into a bloody bag um, thing. I will come to, I'm sorry, I do digress. But I've now put all my bags out because it makes me know what I've got there. So, you know, this is a liar expensive. That is Essentials Antwerp. That is Zara, that is Essentials Antwerp, that's a 20-year-old Prada, that's a Chanel. That's Prada, this is Prada, 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 okay. This is um, very old, no, very, um, oh, it's like a, a lattice, uh, you know. What am I talking, woven bag? And this I got in Vestia Collective for £100, it's from Prada. Then over here, on these sort of daily bags, I just did this. How much do we love that? Can I just say, when you're thinking of how you can put your bags, I found this. I can't remember where I found this, but it just goes against the wall. It might have been Ikea. No, not Ikea. Oh, God, I wish I remember. But anyway, so I put all these bags. So Kos, 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 Vintage, Shrimp's a Gift, Zara. Zara, Zara, Alaya, Essentials, Ahaicha, Celine. Zara, 20-year-old Prada, Zara, Vintage, fifteen pounds. Zara, Anya Heimant, Zara, Cos, Sanoral, Sanoral. That's my bags. Okay, ladies, I've taken far too long on myself. Okay, but I just, you know, weirdly, just interesting. You know, you kind of, you know, having a, a relationship with bags. We all have a different relationship with bags. Um, and also, one of my favourite bloody bags of all time, which I'm just using today, the Zara holographic. Just love it so much. It goes with everything when I'm doing that slightly mad outfit moment. Um, so, okay, total digression. Um, that was like only the first question. What are your views on Chanel bags? I'm sorry that took me so long, but I think it's really important to think how do we use bags? And what bags can do as well is if you have big boobs and you've got a tummy, a bag is so strategic when you wear it cross body. You can, you know, if you really don't like your tummy, but you want to wear a lovely dress and it's a bit small for you here, get a bag. If you have boobs, big boobs, I always feel bags should be round. And if you're quite angular, bags should be oblong. Um, so that, what's that do about the Chanel bag? It means just if you have boobs, don't have big angular things do slightly smaller things. Um, but it has such a, you know, if, if you if you look at your bags and you think which ones look best on you, you'll probably find that is a rule which you can associate and look at, uh, review with your bags. Okay, ladies, good morning. Debbie, good morning. Alan, good morning. Nikki, good morning. Um, Penny, um, Suki, good morning. Booth Cockapoo, hello for Thursday, everybody. Ruby Cat, hello, everybody. Do we think it's okay for women over 50 to wear shorts? All right, let's just talk about shorts because shorts are something that if you, on a practical level, want to wear shorts, wear shorts, you know, nobody's going to judge you for wearing shorts, but many women think, I'd love to wear shorts because it's hot and I need freedom in my legs. And I don't think my legs are what they used to be. And that is the dilemma, because then you think, do they just stay in the garden when I'm doing gardening, if I have a garden? And um, what do I do on a really hot day? So I um, never, I mean, the only time I've worn shorts is in South Africa on a safari with Lila about eight years ago. And about, not eight years ago, but about three years ago. And then 
um, probably when I was hiking in Utah about 10 years ago. And before then, maybe when I was in my 30s, I don't particularly, I don't like my knees very much and they talk to each other. So if I have a really hot day, I'll just wear a long floaty dress. That's my thing. And it's about also, I think with shorts, so many shorts are in linen and they can be crumpled. And I, I'm, I'm not good around a crumpled look. I think they can very easily look really casual. So, you know, lots of ladies in Australia where it's very hot, they might say, well, I, can you do looks that are more casual? Because my life is casual. And my sort of message to women is, you know, is it time in your life to consider upping the ante? Is it time in your life, even if your your circle, your group, let's say you live, there was a lovely woman on a star clinic before who lived in the Arundel. Arundel Mountains in uh, in um, upstate New York, and she had hundreds of pairs of jeans and stuff, and and she was talking about her staples, and and in the small town she lived in, it would be really conspicuous if she wore something very smart. But is there a way that for you, forget about the people around you, for you, do you want to have a look that that you just, even if it's a really casual look, it feels put together, and I think when things crease easily, to me it doesn't feel so put together. So. So I think, if well, I've already 50, can you wear shorts? Yes, if you feel comfortable in them and if that's the look you want to go for. Um, I, I can't give a better um, eye to that. Sam, can you show me some makeup that could work for Indian skin tones? Sam, I'll show you, darling, what's even better for you to do. I could show you lots of looks, but something that's really important to know, and some of you, I realised, don't quite know this, is that if you think, what makeup do I suit? You go on to Trini London, you can do match to me, but also you can do something which is really clever. It's called the lookbook. So you go onto the lookbook here and you look at skin tones and these are all models. I have, we have 89 women on our website, all in different model looks. So if you say an Indian skin tone, I'll go down here to some of our ladies who have um, uh, Indian skin tone and you could just think okay who do I so let's look at Sawa all right so I don't know what shade you are of skin but you can look at Sawa let's get her Sarah and you can just see um, some looks that she is doing in skin tone so that's her essentials look and a munchkin look um, and then we can go back to Vishaka which is a different kind of skin tone um, it's a sort of deepest caramel. Depends so much also how you describe your skin. Sorry, I'm just looking here quickly at Vishaka. That's lovely Vishaka. So lovely. I haven't seen her for a while. She's such a, she was one of our original ladies. But there's Vishaka and it shows you all the products she's wearing. So you might think, let me look at her smoky eye look. And it will show you that's Vishaka in a smoky eye look from Trini London. And then on the left, all the colours she's used. You see? There. So that's a wonderful way for you to look. Um, and, you know, on the lookbook, we have got 89 skin tones. So we go from, you know, the lightest to the to the deepest shades and like that. So there's, you're always going to find somebody that way. All right. If you do a virtual appointment, um, you will, you know, as a tool, they give you that to help you to decide what kind of look you look. OK. Hi, Trini. Which one of your books with Susanna is your favourite that you're most proud of? I think... Um, that What Not To Wear was a book, it, it was our second book actually, our first book was called Ready To Dress, but our, in What Not To Wear, which is a book that was like what you wear for big boobs or flat boobs and the wrong and right ways, it was like a sort of medical dictionary. I think I'm most proud of that because we sold over a million copies of that book and it was number one in America and in England. So in terms of achievements, that was a huge achievement and um, it sort of shot out of nowhere and we were sell selling like 47,000 copies a week. And it was just a sort of, I felt, I always feel that need to have a real, what shall I do or what shall I not do? But what's interesting about that book is that some of those very sort of strict rules Susanna and I put in, I've eased up on as I've um, gone down the path of life. And I've just thought, actually, there's so much more emotion attached to dressing. And you have to include that as well. It's very difficult to do emotions in a book. Um, and then also, What You Wear Can Change Your Life contains um, about 10 pages on colour. And I remember I personally spent forever researching that colour combinations because a lot of women had thought about autumn winter spring summer I'd always found that quite confusing people had really misdiagnosed me and I just thought can we just do cool mid and warm and and just make it a bit simpler and I took so long choosing the colors I was I had my head inside a Pantone um, color chart and I was thinking you know if you're warm what's your yellow your pink and your blue and if you're cool what's your yellow your pink and your blue and how can I encourage every woman to know she can wear every color every woman can wear every color 
it's the shade they've got to get right. So just think of that statement for those of you who have a narrower color palette and are scared of color. Um, just think of that. So if you think I can never wear pink, it could be you haven't found the right pink, but I have never met a woman that I haven't been able to put in a color. Um, so, you know, I, you know how it makes me feel when I wear color. I feel more buoyant and joyful. I can't, I can't tell you enough how much joy it can give once you embrace color and, and start wearing different colors because it changes your mood like that. Okay, are we going to get some women in now? Otherwise, this is just going to be a long old soliloquy, not soliloquy so from me, Adelaide ladies. Hello, darling. I'm wearing Valentina today, one of my favorite lip loves. Um, we have to request to be in the live. Yes, the option comes as you join. Okay, so now I'm going to go and get people. I'm just going to see if there's any burning desire questions before I get people. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to read this up. That's so funny. Um, expensive bags. Yes, you'd rather spend the money on a new horse. Pookie, you see, we all have our priorities. My sister would rather spend the money on a beautiful new chair. You know, we all have what makes us happy. Um, God, Chanel's put up this price of 25%. What criminals? What criminals is that? Do you have different wardrobes containing clothing for different seasons? I am in the fortunate position that I have a room that during lockdown, I really refined this room. And this is my studio. It's my working room. It's where I, you know, come up with new makeup shades. So I have a whole load of um, new makeup things I'm doing here. I have all my clothes on rails and in war uh, wardrobes. But this is like when I'm doing closet confessions, when I'm thinking of my daily outfits of the day for you, it's kind of like my filing system. So I see this as a, a work thing. This is not a normal life wardrobe. Um, downstairs in my bedroom, I just have, you know, a couple of wardrobes and they have kind of my, you know, like every day. I mean, actually, I've put more and more of it up here now, so that's, I'm telling a lie. Um, it used to be that. But since I've been locked down, I kind of dress here too. And I think that I use everything. That's the thing. If I, if I, whenever I've been trying to cull and cull and cull, I do use everything because I have so many examples I want to show you of things. And I always think, well, I'll keep that because it's the right shade for me to use when I'm talking about yellow. <sighs> um, anyway, um, uh, the yellow from Australia. I know, I love that so much. Um, I don't like that Chanel has put up its prices. I know, I, I, this is just appalling about that Chanel. Um, uh, but anyway, um, okay, are we ready? Hold on a second now. Let me just, let me just, let me just. You're only five foot and a little weighty, 12, 14. Can I wear three quarters culottes? I think, Rebecca, that if you are that height and that size, I've done a, two ladies on the Takeover show, exactly your height and shape. So do look at those shows. They are on Instagram. I don't know if you remember at the beginning, I was showing you how to go to IGTV and look at those and you look at the, um, look at the Takeover show or you can go to YouTube. But what I've discovered there is I think on a petite lady, you can do ankle crop. Doing a three quarters, doing a kind of calf crop will bring you down, especially because most calf crop trousers are very wide. So like the Zara culottes, which on me are a sort of um, uh, calf crop, low calf crop, on my petite ladies, they were full length wide leg trousers, which was great. Um, so any lady who is petite, I would say, look at those films because I did so many different types of looks on three different women. One was four foot nine, one was five foot and one was five foot one. And they are, you know, between that, there's about 18 different outfits that you can see to give you inspiration for dressing. Because I still think any woman who's petite can still do layering, can still do ankle length, you know, can, can do everything that a tall woman can do it's all about proportionality it's all about you know put the belt at your waist not at the waist of somebody five foot ten you know when you're wearing a bracelet sleeve so if i went like wear a short sleeve jacket okay a jacket that's just like the sleeves are too short generally with this i would wear a longer sleeve shirt underneath so for somebody who's petite if you buy a bracelet sleeve jacket because you love the shape, but it gives you that too short a jacket look. Because you're showing more um, skin here, uh, I feel anyone petite who shows more skin um, can look taller, if you want to look taller. But then I look at two girls called the Olsen twins. That some of your children might have watched those, those TV shows and they grew up and they um, did a range called The Row. It's one of the most expensive ready to wear collections. It's so, Beautifully made classic pieces at prohibitive prices. 
But the only reason I bring those two up is they're five foot or five foot one. And they wear oversized. Um, but the way they do it and the way they wear volume is amazing. And it's probably because they are a size eight or ten. Uh, but it's really interesting to look at them. And I think finding role models who are your height is really good and seeing how they dress. So, um, so I just think takeover shows, you can get some takeaway from that. Um, anyway, um, what, uh, what tips do you have for maternity wear? Maternity wear Victoria is, I'm asked this a lot and I haven't answered it much. So I do want to answer it, answer it, but like Susanna and I were pregnant at the same time when we were two fundamentally different shapes for maternity. And I think what happens in maternity when you get pregnant, if you're my shape, which is that I'm bottom heavy and I'm long bodied and short legged, but everything about my physique, men, uh, uh, physically, and aesthetically means that I get heavier at the bottom. So my legs became really heavy. I had a lot of water retention. So I was incredibly uncomfortable showing my ankles and showing my legs. So I did wear sort of skirts and stretch, stretchy trousers, which covered it, but my arms are still good and I suddenly got boobs. So I wore really sexy tops with long skirts and I put the um, skirt underneath the bump, okay? Um, and I wore trousers which are stretchy and I'd wear them over, but then I'd wear some layering on top. Um, so Susanna, on the other hand, had, through her pregnancies, because she has incredible legs, um, she uh, always showed off her legs and she wore like dresses which hardly showed her tummy. They were kind of like a bit tenty. Um, and then she'd have these skinny legs or she'd do a really form-fitting dress and have the legs come out. So I do think women can be they like their top half more than their bottom half, or they like their bottom half more than top half. And I think as a result, in maternity, you have to dress according to that. I didn't really buy maternity clothes. I put on four stones, so I did put on a lot um, uh, in terms of, you know, my body changed, but I bought slightly bigger clothing. I bought dresses that, um, you know, were oversized and then you could tie with a belt at the top. Um, I did quite a lot of things where I put a belt over my bump, but at the back I put the belt inside the clothing. So from behind, it didn't kind of become tight and then flare out to my much larger bottom. So I did tricks like that. I might do a whole thing on maternity. I think when we get out of um, staying at home and we're doing more social um, chatting around, I will choose a lady who's pregnant and we can do one for the takeover show. And I think that'd be quite helpful. Um, you just want to say, so the detailed journalist... Um, um, oh, that's very sweet. Thank you very much. Booth Cockaboo, what not to wear with your Bible. Thank you, darling. Um, Nettie, I am, I am Oprah, but I have more of a yellow undertone and Femi is a bit too red. Angeli makes me look dead. Um, Oprah is great, but not all over. What shall I do? Now, I'll tell you what, Nettie, we're doing is we've been working for ages before, funnily enough, um, everything to do with Black Lives Matter on increasing our foundations because um, just a touch has incredible stretch, like my shade can go on five different skin tones, but we are thinking, where are the gaps? So we have this very big project, which um, we were um, starting and um, lockdown happened of getting many women in. So this week, actually, we have um, on Monday, Wednesday, and this Friday, we have got in 40 women, um, uh, very socially distant in the office, and we are testing um, more foundation shades. So if you find your in-between, by January, you will find your shade. I'm saying this very early on, but that, that's what we're doing. And we do have work to do in it. And I'll be really happy when that's done. Um, and there are many other things that are coming out as the brand grows up. And um, we are really looking at um, having exactly the match for every single person and equally in very much lighter skin tones because we have you know we have we start with um we start with uh a bambi and we need a shade lighter which is like a sort of alabaster shade and then you know that th we're looking at where are their gaps so if people mix you know i never want people to have to mix so um i would say on that wait till the end of january um, and I know that's a long wait, but but then you will get that because um, it's it's a kind of really crucial thing that we're doing. And um, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happen over the next year and a bit. So exciting. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, Rochelle, there was a request to join button. I know. Um, blaze a perfect size 14, bigger arms, slightly smaller waist, bigger thighs. Um, did you see the new cornflower blades at Zara? I did and I bought it. 
um, it's lovely. I will show it to people in case because you've shown it. I did put it on my stories the other day, but I have to say that when you find, you know, when you're in Zara and you find your perfect shade, if you see your perfect shade, there will never be a reason not to buy it. This is Cornflower Blue is the most gorgeous shade. I now will look like the Swedish flag, but I'm going to wear it with my skirt from uh, Templey, like that. And um, also um, the flo floppy trousers, you know the floppy trousers from Zara that I had last summer. Some wonderful Trini tribe said to me, do you know they come in blue Trini? So I did this and this the, uh, um, at the weekend. It felt fantastic. It's such a pretty blue um, in Zara now. I, I have had a little shop up. I'm gonna show you the thing slowly. But um, I would say that uh, this is such a great color. I think 59 pounds, um, because it wasn't quite Zara basic, but it was sort of basic. Um, okay, all right, when's the next Zara haul? Well, you know, I'm gonna check what's in there. I could do one uh, in the next 10 days. I'll have a think. I might have a little look. It's also about getting somebody to film with me. And, you know, I went in early. The only reason I went in early is there's a very nice manager at the King Toy store and we said, can we come in early to shoot? And I don't particularly, you know, I've gone shopping a little bit. I don't know how many of you have gone out and gone shopping. And I, you know, I know like, for example, Melbourne is on lockdown. So there's people in certain countries watching now who cannot go out shopping. And I don't know how you all feel about going out shopping. I still don't feel 100% comfortable and I definitely don't want to go into a busy, busy shop. Not that there are any, actually. Um, apart from I haven't been queuing in Nike for the sale, you know, but I just, um, yeah, I prefer to buy online. So, so if I go in the shop for you and then you can buy online, that's kind of great, isn't it? Uh, I'll try and fit one in quite soon. All right. Um, Zara sizing. Yeah, let's talk about Zara sizing. Talk about bloody, let's have a whinge, shall we, about Zara sizing. If at all Zara, anyone from Zara is listening or watching, we just want to say this, that when you launched, however many years ago, you used to do small, medium, large. Then you expanded to extra, small, small, medium, large, extra, large. Then you made this decision to do extra, extra, small, extra, small, small, medium, medium, large, large, extra, large, extra, extra, large. But the extra, extra, large was in fact XL. And then like last year, I didn't change weight that much. You decided that a medium would actually be the sizing for a large. So anything that I would have bought in a medium, I bought in a large. So anyone, I was, I'm a 12, okay? But anyone who's a 14, 16, 60, 47% of women in England are size 16 and above, 47% of women, okay? So I don't know what goes on here. It's tricky because you kind of think they'd want to cater to the biggest common denominator and the frustration that this store just does not. First of all, the concept, it's like the labeling of a size to say, like Chloe, she goes, Trini, I don't know if the XL, I have to buy the XXL. Just saying those words, you're defining me as extra, extra large. Chloe is a size 16. And that definition and that label is so body shaming. So I hate it. I really hate it. And I don't like the fact that they don't, you know, go up really, you know, I can get Chloe, you know, Chloe will fit dresses, she'll fit tops, trousers only if they're wide leg, if they're the kind of, you know, fitted trouser, forget it. A 44 will not fit and they don't do a 46. So really Zara, think about your audience, think about your consumer, think about, this is an interesting time. There's a lot of noise about efficacy of brands and how they treat their um how they treat their um staff and how they treat their workers who make their products and i know that lots of you not lots of you a few of you have commented about you know trini zara blah 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 i think that i always need to um reference a high street brand because i think that for people's budget you could all buy second hand or buy cheaper but some people just want something new and they don't feel anyone else has worn it and I want to reference a company that's around the world that everyone can get hold of that is not a prohibitive price. So Zara does fit that. I'd much first do Zara than H&M and I'd much first do Zara than Boo, um, Boo.com or Nasty Gal because, you know, when I look at what's happening in England in some of the factories around Nasty Gal, maybe this is happening with Zara in India. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and so 
I'm prepared to move my view, but at the moment, I would just like to say, Zara, please make bigger sizes, um, because I just think it's really unfair, really unfair. Uh, Sonia, any advice on cleaning up a wardrobe and sticking up, sticking to a style? I have so many clothes as I'm a bit of an impulsive buyer. However, I know what to get rid of, but have nothing to wear. Okay, so Sonia, I think that, you know, there's a lot of women who will say this statement that they wear 25% um, of their wardrobe 85% 80, of the time. Okay, they don't wear 85% of their wardrobe 25% of the time. Big difference. So you've got to look at what you're continuously not wearing. Now, when I was doing a little piece on this with Holly on this morning, and she went, Trini, somebody told me to put the hanger in the wrong way round, and at the end of a couple of months, see which ones are the right way round, because if you've worn it and you put it back, you put it back the right way round. That's kind of interesting. But I'm anal, so I couldn't live like that with <laughs> my wardrobe. So... You need to really question what you're not wearing. And I've got two thoughts on this. There are some things that I don't wear for about two or three years and I rediscover them because suddenly the color works with something else, which makes me think I'll hold on to things. But there's certain styles that no longer suit me. So I've got to a stage going down the path of life where I do not suit a princess style dress. And that is actually one of the very few things that's an age thing. That's a matten element to my dressing. So I'll look at those and I'll think, okay, Trini, if you put on a dress that's really wasted and got a good cut, what does that do for you? How ageless does that make you feel? And is that cut flattering your body? And if I look at those slightly prettier styles I used to do a few years ago where the waistline was a bit higher and I felt girly, mm, meh. okay, those are objective decisions you can make now. Then there's what colors suit you. That's the next thing I'd start on is, you know, if you pick something up and you keep putting it on, you keep thinking, whatever makeup I wear, I can't get this product. I can't wear this thing, it wears me. Get rid of it because the color will never suddenly suit you. Um, if the color is right by your face, if the color is on your bottom half, it could be you can have a tonal color, which actually is more flattering to you. But anything that's a top, that's a jacket, that's a coat, that's a dress, and the color isn't good on you, get rid of it. Just get rid of it of it now. So by this stage, you've probably got rid of 20% of your wardrobe. That's, that's the start. Just start with that, and then we can have a chat later. Um, uh, there is Ange. I think I'm in the warm section, but somebody said Trintron wearers are neutral. Is this the case, please? Now, Ange, when you're looking at skin tone and clothing, I don't want to make it too complicated, but um, neutral when you talk about skin, my, like my skin is neutral. There isn't a sort of olivey, olivey green undertone, yellowy undertone, and there isn't too much of pink undertone. But my hair, if I had auburn hair and I had brown eyes, I would be for clothing, I would suit warm category of clothing. So I would suit those lovely rusty tones, those sort of sunset, you know, autumnal tones. But I could equally be somebody who has this neutral skin and I have a, a sort of very cool blonde hair and I have a bright blue eye. And um, that brings me to neutral cool. So I would suit bright yellow. I would suit really clear, bright colors. Um, so that's more skin sort of sits in this place and it's the hair and the eye that would drag it somewhere else. So if your skin sits, you know, if Trinton is a foundation for a neutral skin tone, but it's all the other things around you that will push you towards wearing different colors. Um, Canada Trini Tribe is now over 600 members. Cannot wait for a meetup one day soon. Brit Airways girl, that, Brit girl always, that is fantastic. I'm so excited. And when you do one, let me know and I'll see if I can join. Um, I'm so excited for you. I really hope we can get everything sorted out in Canada because I know we have these issues for Trinity London around taxes and stuff, and it's so frustrating. And Mark, the other day, come up with a new idea, but I don't know where we're at on it. It would take a while to implement, but we're trying to think, how can we? Because even if we distribute it in America, then sending up to Canada, there's still the tax issue. So I'm thinking about it. Trinity does Australia, Zara, and Zara UK stop the same thing, just a different time um, to know. That's Al Quinn land. When I was in Australia in November... Was it November or December I went, ladies? Can you remember? Um, if anyone in Australia is still up. But when I... Yes, he will be up, actually. When I went, and I went to the Bondi Junction, Zara, which to me, Bondi Junction, Westfield, is a really smart, chic Westfield. 
And I went in and I'd said I might meet a couple of people there and lots of people turned up. And I went round the clothing and I was staggered. Staggered by the amount of the lack of colour, the lack of sequin, the lack of brightness, the lack of fun. Boom, boom. There were, there were a few pieces I recognised, some from, you know, only a few months before and some that were the last season because obviously your winter is our summer and vice versa. So I think there isn't a hard and fast rule. And I think if I see something in it, you know, if I put something on, on a live, somebody will say, well, we'll get that in Australia six months later. But I think it's more that Zara had a grading for stores. This is a secret thing, but I've kind of worked it out. So if they have a really amazing store like Bond Street in London, that corner store, like Duke of York's Barracks, like Brompton Road, those are kind of their A, AAA stores. So they all shit, they will have everything in there that's their cult collections. And they, Zara twice a year do these special collections, they'll put them in those stores. Then a sort of tier B store could be in London, if you are from London, I'm only going to say this because my reference point, would be Kensington High Street. And that will have a little bit of the quite fashiony stuff and a lot of the essentials. And then I would say a, a tier three is something like the Reading Oracle. And I once went to that um, store and it was a lot of basic stores, a bit messy. Um, it hadn't been upgraded for a while um, and it just felt boring. So I think there are different categories also of store. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's my view. <laughs> I've stopped that so long. Um, social distancing in Australia disappeared a few weeks ago. That's why we are where we are in Melbourne. I know it's like this is what's happening in England. I just don't know. Um, it's tricky, isn't it? Uh, it's very tricky. Um, two same size garments can also fit differently. It's a nightmare. I know. I totally agree. They mislabel as well. There's so many things wrong. I mean, we should write a petition, shouldn't we? Um, Hannah, I don't think I know what size I am at the moment. Every shop is different. You know, you've got to, I mean, the, the most important thing here, and it's very difficult when you shop online, is I have shopped in the same shop so often that I will know what, um, what I will fit. So in Zara, there's a wide leg trouser, and I know that will fit better because it's high-waisted than their trousers that are fitted and just a bit lower because they're really tight on the thigh and I have to go up a size. I know they're stretchy trousers, I can wear a medium. I know they're fitted trousers, I wear a L. So you kind of know that stuff. And then also, interestingly, it applies with designers. So if you ever buy designer clothes and you might buy full price in the sale or on Bestia Collective, these are some pointers that I have discovered. If the designer is a man, he wants every woman to be a stick thing model. So he doesn't give you any generosity on the thigh at all ever. Tom Ford, let me name and shame. Hedy Semaine, let me name and shame. Um, Yves Saint Laurent used to because he was a bit commercial. Um, Galliano kind of never gave uh, a thought to a woman having a proper thigh. So I have noticed that in my 30 years of fashion. Um, with female designers, they design initially on their body shape. So if I look at Stella McCartney, she is phenomenal for long-legged, short-bodied, no-waisted, boobed women because that's Stella McCartney's body shape. She has those beautiful legs. She's got a short waist. She has boobs and um, I don't know if she has, goes in much of the waist. I can't figure it out. So her jumpsuits always would be too short for me. If I look at somebody like Alice Templey, and the reason I buy Alice Templey is I know Alice because, you know, her first, I bought her first collection. I bought half her first collection many years ago. And she has a, she's got smaller boobs and she's, um, I wouldn't say she's long bodied, but her She's slightly longer bodied than shorter bodied. Um, her, and she's always, she doesn't often show her legs fully. Um, so I know her jumpsuits will fit me. I know the proportions of her dresses will work. You know, it's like, that's something quite interesting. So just, you know, look at who the designer is. Um, it does sometimes help you. Um, anyway, um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Ah, uh, any eye makeup, I. Any eye makeup ideas for a holistic return to the skies want to still be glam whilst wearing a mask? Um, it's interesting about out and about and what you're going to do. I kind of love uh, wearing our new Mother Earth collection because the colours are gorgeous and they're bright without being smoky. So it's like, how much do you want to show off your eyes? And any woman who, because of her religion, hello darling, wears um, covering either just around her hairline or over her um, lower face as well, you know, there is a tendency in that religion that they really pay attention to their eyes and, you know, they make the most beautiful eyes um, in their makeup and there's more focus there. So I'd kind of say, 
you needn't do smoky black holy eye, but you can do brightness on your eye. And brightness on your eye, I'm going to wear now a colour which probably doesn't necessarily work with this. But let me just see um, what I would do. Because I kind of love. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, come on. No, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't find it. I can't find it. Let me see if I've got. Yes, yes. So this is fortitude, you know, and I just kind of do a little bit of a, you know, just a. I, I'm loving the idea now in life of a bright eye. So Mother Earth has these beautiful shades. This is Fortitude, which is this sort of crimson with a little underlying of pink. So that, and then I'm wearing a mask. You know, it's just softly gives you something. I might, should I do mask makeup? Would you like me to do some mask makeup looks? Should we do that? Because, um... <laughs> We could do that. I'll do that, actually. I love that idea, and I, I, think, I think it's a good thing to think about. Okay, so if you'd like mask makeup looks, can you click hearts now, and then I'll do them. Um, uh, and then I pick you. You talk a lot about short, long body shape and legs. How do you work out what your proportions are, please? I'm five foot two, and I think I'm in proportion. Okay, let's try and do this, shall we? I know you've asked me this so much. Now, for me, if you have... Can I do this properly? So I don't know if I've got the right clothes to do it on, but let me just look at my body. So if you look at my body, and it's difficult because you're going to look at my trousers. Don't look at my trousers, try and look at my body. If I took the distance, um, hey, excellent. We're going to do it with a goddamn ruler. Brilliant. So I'm going to measure my shoulder to my crotch. It's the first measurement I'm going to make. So my shoulder to my crotch, is yeah, I'm gonna start shoulder. No, sorry, I need to do it from the neckline. That's what I do. So that's 30. Is that 30? 30. 60. Sorry. <laughs> Clutch from my crutch 60. Can't add up. 66! Okay. Uh, the, the clavicle to the crotch, 66. Somebody remember 66. Now I'm going to go from the crotch, inside leg down. So, or right there. Um, so I'm 66 from here to here, and I'm. 70 from here to here all right so that to me means that i've got quite a long body because if i take somebody lila lila lila, lila. can i can i use you jenny. 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 jen now jenny here's lovely jenny Hi. let me introduce you to jenny <laughs> none of you have met jenny so jenny <laughs> has been lila's Jenny, you came for, to be Liza's maternity nurse. Yes, that's right. And here I am. And here she is. 17 years later. 17 <laughs> years later. This is Jenny. Jenny is the other half in Lila's life, and you've never met her, so it's my joy to introduce you to Jenny. And um, Jenny, um, Jenny is Lila's other mum, really. <laughs> Granny, Jenny, granny, like granny, because mummy, my mummy is a granny, but Jenny is around a, a lot more. So Jenny, in our book, The Body Shape Bible, was the bell. Do you remember, if any of you remember that book, Jenny, Magnificent the Bell. Now, Jenny, take a step back. Because what I want to do is I want to show, people always say, long body, short leg. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to do Jenny now, okay? Because this is really, it just shows. So there's Jen. And I'm going to go from Jenny's here to your, from your neckline, Jen. And we're going to look. And it is, you are 30. And Jenny, I'm going to go down to your crutch, darling. Okay. There. So you're 30, 40. Jenny is 50. Two, okay, 52 from clavicle to crotch. And inside, Jen. No, it's all right, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get rid of it. there, and then there. 60, 70. 52, 70. What's Jenny? Come on, ladies, you can work it out. Short-bodied, long-legged, okay? Proportions, Jenny, thank you, darling. Thank you. So nice. Um, I can do Lila in a second, but Jenny was brilliant. So, and Jenny is a bell, which means Jenny's, Jenny's um, got a tiny waist and a uh, bigger bottom. So in the Body Shape Bible, we did a lot of work around how you dress for that shape. So nice for you to meet Jenny. I can't tell you how lovely it is for you to meet Jenny. 
Um, anyway, just lovely. Jenny is, is very big in my heart. Very big in my heart, I can't tell you. Um, all right, so um, cold and winters. All right, oh my God, ladies, you really left in a lot of, of comments here. Bye, Jenny, I know, lovely Jenny. Okay, uh, okay there's Lila, so let's do Lila. Lila's gone. Lila has a jeans addiction. Okay. Lila, we've only got one minute to do this. So come here. Okay, so, all right. So, just ta step back, step back. Does everyone like my jeans? Okay, all right. Does everyone like Lila's jeans? I'm not quite sure. Don't do lots of hearts, please. Thank you. She's no I've never let her buy ripped jeans, so can we not, not, no hearts. No hearts. No, yes. Thank no hearts. Lila, no hearts. Lila, Lila. No, they all like them. Okay, they all love you, but just of your jeans. All right, so I'm doing Lila now, and I'm doing Lila here. So I'm doing Lila is, hold on, stop moving, stop moving. So that's 30, two here, 30, 52, 52 top, and then going down here. 30. How short that is? Long legs, shorter body. All right. Thank you, Lila. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, Lila. Okay, ladies. Um, that, that's a little idea of what it, what it can tell you um, about body shape. We can do a whole... I'm really sorry I didn't call any of you in because I want to save this because there was good information and then we can make a nice film. We can put that on and give it to the Facebook ladies. So what I promise to you is the next time we do it, I will just get people in. I won't waffle on. And also we can do body shape and we can really diagnose body shape. Okay, thank you. Oh, sausage. I got to go now because I got my lunch. Oh, oh, oh my God. Chicken sausages are the best. Mm. 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 No, you can't have it. It's mine. It's mine. Um, when is the next? I'll find out. We'll book one in. I love doing these with you, you know, so much. And, um, and we'll do another one very soon, okay? And I will get you all in. Uh, if the measurements are similar. So when you're measuring yourself, basically, my measurements are similar, which means my legs are a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. The bigger the distance from your top half to your bottom half, the more chance you've got longer legs. Because I was sort of equal measurement. It means I'm a little bit short-legged because really your torso should be a bit shorter than your legs. Got the idea of it. Um, yeah, Jenny is special, special lady. Um, okay, um, what do I do with my white top to eat? How do I do with my white top to eat? I eat like this, okay? <laughs> Happy birthday, Rafa kids, um, darling. Uh, Lila, where are your jeans from? Huh? Where are your jeans from? Bershka. Bershka. I didn't know she bought them. Hmm. I told you I brought jeans like the Levi ones that you had when you were younger that you didn't save for me. It's your fault, not mine. It is. You didn't save them. 